Okay. Hi, everyone. I uh, am here by myself. I don't know if everyone got busy or if everyone can't figure it out. I don't know if I set it up properly. So I'm going to try to flip around here on my um, YouTube stuff to see if anyone's asking, like, where are you? And if not, then maybe we have to postpone, postpone for another night. I know that things come up, right? This is part of being a teacher, um, part of being an adult, I guess, not even just being a teacher. Okay, bear with me while I uh, move here. Um, for those who might be watching, we should be discussing Dave Burgess's Teach Like a Pirate, which the Virtual Teacher Book Club has been reading. Um, I know people have been reading it because we've been getting fairly good traction on our uh, on our Boxer group. And uh, I've seen a couple of things on Twitter. Um, okay, hold on, I've got to navigate through here. And, oh shoot, I wonder if we might get some big feedback in a second. Bear with me. Yeah. Huh. So showing that it should be working. <laughs> I feel like a crazy person talking to my computer. Hey. Hey. <laughs> I'm here. Hi. I'm here. I have a friend, everyone. <laughs> Hi. This is Jocelyn. Hi, Jocelyn. <laughs> How you doing? Um, so I was just, just talk, I just said, I feel like a crazy person talking to my computer. Um, and so I told them reading this book. I don't know where everyone went. Um, and I was hoping, so, okay, that's good. So we did send out the room. It might just be you and I for a little bit. I'm trying to find out. Have you ever done a YouTube live before like this? Not like this. No, I did the Google Hangout with my students. Yeah. So day. I've seen it, but not as like I've done the backside producing of it. Um, when, so where did you send the link? Like where did I people put the link into the Voxer group and it's on the website? We're live right now, by the way. You're broadcasting. Fine. Um do you want to post a link on your Twitter feed as well, maybe? Yeah, that's a good idea. We could pop by and do that. Um, the other thing I want to try to do, I should almost go like stop broadcast for a bit, but whatever people can see, this is part of the process. Welcome, um, Welcome to live television-ish. <laughs> if the Oscars can screw up, that's right. I can screw up. Live technology right here. <laughs> um, I'm going to do the, there, I'm going to do unclick so that it actually goes between both of us See, it's only two, because I know how to do the backside producing, but see, if you, if you do it on the backside, it'll actually say... Go back, go back. That, oh, it's not that one. That's one. Okay. And um, I'm popping in and out of my other Twitter chat as well, so. Um, learn like a pirate, that one? Uh, uh, explore like a pirate. Yeah, XP Lab. XP Lab. Okay. Um, so I'm on Twitter. Um, want to join the, not John. Want to join the <laughs> Okay, I will be back. Okay. I'll sit here and talk to my computer like a crazy person. Uh -huh. Mute. Where's my mute? Okay, tweeted. Who knows who's gonna join? This could be crazy. I just randomly put out there to almost 1,400 people. Hey, come join us on the internet. That's not very digitally responsible. Hmm. Okay, so I'm still here. Jocelyn has disappeared. She'll probably hear me and she's probably laughing at me. So, I'll, you know what I'll do? Oh, I wonder how much private stuff is back here, actually. Maybe I don't want to do that. I was going to say, I'll share my screen. Oh, here comes Dave. Hi, Dave. Hey, how you doing? 
Good, good. Um, so, so far I have Jocelyn. Uh, Chris had to bail. There was five of us to begin with, so that took us down to four, but only Jocelyn is there. So there's Jocelyn. Hi, Jocelyn. You're still muted, honey. Yeah, okay. I fixed that. No worries. It's all good. <laughs> How you doing, Oh, Dave? there you are. I'm good. How are you doing? Good. I'm, uh, I'm hanging out between this and the, uh, the XP lap chat that goes on at this hour. It is a so. crazy night tonight. It is. I'm going to um, I'm going to try to schedule it a bit differently next week when we talk about the next part. I'd really like um, Rebecca and um, Eileen to join, like from Australia and Northern Ireland. I'd like to try to get sort of that whole get all the countries represented. Cool. Right now we're dual country only, two from Canada and you from the states, Dave. <laughs> that would be awesome to have them be able to participate. It's hard. It's hard to navigate those time zones. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm going to try my best though. I'm going to see what I can work out. Yeah. So you presented up in Canada before? I have several times. In fact, I think I'm going there maybe not too long from now. Um, but yeah, I've been lots of places in Canada. Just trying to see if I can pop a place, pop up my calendar at the same time. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out if there's a chat to see if people are actually watching us. But I'm, I, I accidentally um, scheduled one chat that said... Um, that I didn't use Google Hangouts for. I didn't put the right one for some reason, but oh, here we go. Okay, it should be this one. And so, and it won't let me erase it, and I'm not really sure why. Doesn't matter. Hmm. One chat. Oh, oh God. That said, um, hold on. Can I mute? That I didn't use Google Hangouts for. I didn't put the right <laughs> Okay. And so, and it won't let me erase it. See myself on a sort of back chat there. Oh, this is weird. I have like this so, double screen of you guys and me and you guys and me. And <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to be okay. in Cam Cam Loops. Oh yeah, does that make sense? In, yeah, Cam Loops uh, on Columbia. April 24th. I'm speaking there April 24th. Oh, that's cool. That's only um a four hour plane ride from here. Yeah. Oh, that's well, that's pretty far. <laughs> <laughs> we, I, we always laugh when people come to visit from anywhere that's not, you know, they don't understand the vastness that is Canada. So they'll come to Toronto totally. from Europe and say, hey, oh my gosh, I, I have this friend in Vancouver. Can we go for the weekend? I'm like, you could, no. but it's actually closer <laughs> to like Florida. Yeah. yeah. Like, can we go get lunch? Let's go get lunch. Right? So good. Anyway. Okay. Well, while we have you as our captive audience, Dave, why don't Jocelyn, you and I ask some questions or pose what we... Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I, I have a question. Dave, our prompt for this week was out of like the pirate acronym, which one speaks most to your natural sort of process and which one is the most challenging? So how would you answer that? Yeah, so this is this is similar to when people ask me about what's my favorite hook when you get to part two of the book. Mm -hmm. And it's 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 a little bit it's a little bit like asking who's your favorite child. Um and so uh, yeah, it's, it's, tough, it's tough to. And I often tell my kids that they're the bronze medal kid. I say, you know, you're on the podium, but do math. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so it's tough to choose, but I'm going to say uh, so. My favorite letter, probably, uh, it's so hard. I I'll tell you the, the essential question of T lap is in the T chapter transformation okay and it starts with one of my favorite quotes which is that if you provide an uncommon experience for your students they'll reward you with an uncommon effort and attitude and then it has the essential question of basically the whole book and that's that if they didn't have to be there would you be teaching to an empty room that right there is the essential question of the tea lab or is, or is there something about you and the way you make kids feel when they're in your presence and the experiences you create for them and what you're offering them that maybe they're not getting anywhere else in their life, then they will be drawn to you in your room anyway. And those are the teachers that we want to be. And so the transformation chapter, I think, is, um, you know, that's like a, that's, I always end my keynotes, workshops with T, even though there's another letter after it. I, I switch the letters around and I end with T and I end with uh, transformation because I think that's kind of like the real key right there at the end. Awesome. All right. Okay. Thank you for that. That's exciting. Yeah. And you are as passionate as I imagined you would be. <laughs> With an audience of two. That's amazing. Yeah. Doss, hey, so it, oh, sorry, go ahead, Dave. 
No, I was just gonna say if it if it uh, if at some point like if you want me to kind of share since there's just the three of us, but I think maybe other people might watch later. Like if you want me yeah. to share kind of sort of the background the background of some of this and kind of where it came from for me, like the the process of getting into all this to begin with, um, I can do that too. So, but it, yes. anything you want to talk about? The the floor is yours. This is. You want to um, go for that? Yeah, so I started, maybe I'll give you a bit of background why I started this. So I, I, I have yeah. part of a book club. I love reading. I'm an English teacher generally, but now I'm, I'm sort of a TOSA. We call them digital literacy resource teachers, but essentially I'm um, like a, a, a tech coach. And I'm taking a course right now on integrating technology into the classroom. And they wanted us to implement tech into a class. I'm like, well, I don't have a class. So what could I do? And I said, well, I want to connect teachers. So it started in the board. And essentially, I'd say about a third of the group is in our board. I just tweeted it out to our people. And then when I put, when I built the website and et cetera, et cetera, it sort of snowballed into this. We have, I think there's 35 or seven members, um, four countries, 10 states, one province. So I was like, oh my gosh, this sort of came out of nowhere, which was a lot of fun for me because like we can hear different voices and like on the Voxer, I'm sure you've heard like, you sort of every now and then get a little pop up on, hey, this is what this person has to say. So um, as you know, I heard you speak at Matt Miller's Ditch Summit, sort of online thing, and I sketch noted all that. And then I thought, okay, I've got to, I've got to read this book because I love, it was my favorite sketch to do of all of them and I got to read this. So I hadn't made the time because I believe in making time, not having time or finding time. Um, I hadn't made the time to read it. So I thought this is what I'm going to do to be authentic for me and my learning in this course. I'm, I'm going to make a virtual book club and I'm going to force people to read this book. And it's so far <laughs> been awesome. So well, thank tell you. us how yeah. we got uh, to Tila. Yeah, so first of all, I mean, thank you very much for putting this all together. I really appreciate it. I'm honored that you guys are reading TLAP and choosing to discuss it and that you decided that it was okay for me to be in there too. And so that was, you know, one of the things I had contacted you early on and said like, hey, if, if me being in there is going to stop people from talking honestly and authentically about the book, then I don't want to do it. But if you want me to be in there, I would love to do it. So thanks for putting me in. Um, so I'll, I'll kind of give you a little... When I put that yeah. out, every single person said, absolutely, we want him in there. There wasn't even a single voice that, that was reticent at all. That's awesome. Yeah, because I, I always just worry. I don't want to, like, depress conversation. I want to, like, you know, hopefully it'll flourish. But anyway, so I'll, I'll kind of give you a little backdrop on this. So this all started for me back in about 2005. And I've been teaching in my classroom for several years. And then one day my department chair came to me and said, hey, I just got put on the professional development committee for the district. And I thought to myself, how cool would it be if you put together a workshop based on some of that crazy stuff you do down in your room that nobody uh, seems to understand, right? And, but then he said, I, but then I don't think you can because I think that your success in the classroom is just kind of you. I think it's personality driven. I'm not sure it's something that you could teach to other people. So it's probably not a good so idea. He just, kind of moved, he just kind of moved on. Uh, and, and oh, we have a jo someone joining us. I'm Kelly and Conway sat on the couch. I'm so unlike, like, coming from a person that you are. Was never the right thing for our country. Maybe I'll, I'll see if I can Hi, meet. Susan. Hi, Susan. Oh, hello. Welcome. Hi. He's just telling us the background of, of Teach Like a Pirate. So welcome. Welcome and join in. Thank you. This is my first time doing one of these. <laughs> oh, super. Hi, Susan. How are you? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so, so anyway, I... He kind of moved on. I'm like, hey, I, I want to do one of those workshops. I keep, like, sign me up for one of those things. So I signed up to do an all-day workshop for the peers in my district. And I drove away from that meeting going like, oh, my God, what have I just done? Like, I don't have a workshop. I don't have any of this organized. I don't have anything, like, written down in any way. And so I got relentless about writing down everything I do in my, work, in my classroom that I thought was successful. But then that wasn't good enough because that's just what I do. I had to take it a step back further and try to come up with where do these ideas come from to begin with? What are the roots of these ideas? And why did this work and why didn't this work? And so it forced me to become more intentional about my teaching. And every time I traced back, it went back to the same thing. It was a question. Question. It was a kind of question that I was asking about my lessons that maybe other people weren't asking. And so I began to compile those questions one after another until eventually I had 170 different questions, which I put into 30 different categories of hooks eventually. And that became the centerpiece of the workshop that I did that summer. But then I, 
I'm obsessed with finding ways to kind of package material to make it easier to understand. I call it putting handles on material to make it easier for kids to pick up. Like I always want to put handles on material to make it easier for them to pick up and take with them. Well, I wanted to put handles on this workshop. And so I wanted a theme. I wanted to be able to model and demonstrate some of the ideas. And, and, and so pirates appeal to me because pirates are unconventional, right? They're willing to reject the status quo. They're rebels, mavericks. And so I like this pirate thing. And then pirates are known for having hooks. And this was all about how I was hooking students and trying to teach teachers to hook students. And then I'm abnormally obsessed with acronyms, as many educators are. So the first thing I did is I turned a page sideways and I put the letters down on the page and I began to try to brainstorm what the letters could possibly be. And I, I knew I wanted to talk about passion and enthusiasm. And there the P and the E were sitting at the beginning and the end of the word, right? And then uh, I, it's like the cornerstones. And then I knew I wanted to talk about building rapport with kids as being sort of like the heart of teaching. And there the R was sitting in the center. And so I was like, oh, this was perfect. And so I, 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 it allowed me to, to dress, it allowed me to, to use the interior design hook, allowed me to use all these different things. And so I gave the workshop that summer. And then I began to go anywhere where anyone will listen to me to talk about this stuff. Like literally, I just submitted conference proposals everywhere. And if any conference anywhere said, yeah, you can come do your pirate thing, 60, 90 minutes, whatever it was, I, I, I got a plane ticket. I flew there. I, I bought a conference registration. I got a hotel room and, and I went and I did my thing. And so nobody knew who I was at this point. I was just a crazy guy walking around these, these conferences dressed like a pirate, right? And, and so um, like I literally recruited people. I literally recruited people. Yeah. Very beginning, like as the pirate, if you always had the, the gear, Always, yeah, from the very first workshop. That, and, and so like that was part of the original brainstorming of I wanted to have a theme. I wanted to be able to package it and like model and demonstrate the ideas, right? And so like I, I literally walked around these conferences and recruited people. I went up to I, I went to the breakfast areas, I went to the lobbies of these hotels, and I just came up to groups of people and said and, and told them what I was doing and told them to join me at my session. I went by breakfast tables and just said, Hey, I hear there's, there's gonna be a pirate in room 18 at 10 o'clock, and just and just walk by. And they see a six five pirate walk by, right? And so I played loud pirate music out of my room. I, I had a sign just written on a phone board at this point. I didn't even have a computer, it just said the number one top secret way to become a better lover and I propped it up in the front of my room. <laughs> and uh, I sat out in the hallway and, and I dragged people in, like a circus, like a carnival caller, right? You know, I was just like, hey, you don't want to go to that workshop. This one's going to be better. Come on, let's go. Come over in here. Look, read the sign. You need this stuff. And I just started to draw people in. And, uh, and, and pretty, like, I was packing these rooms. Like, people were lined on the wall, along the walls and sitting in the, uh, in the um, aisles and along the, like, behind me even. Like, oh, you couldn't even room, you could, like, we were breaking fire code after fire code at these hotels, right? And then everyone else at these workshops would get up and, and read down their PowerPoint slides. And I got up and I just strapped on a little microphone and I went racing through the room and demonstrated these, these techniques, these strategies. And it started to build, it started to grow, right? And then uh, finally a publishing company came to me and said, hey, we would like to do a book with you based on some of these ideas, right? And so I sat down and I met with them. I was shocked and stunned. Yeah to find out what a traditional public contract looks like. Like, I, I couldn't believe it. To me, the only thing missing was a ski mask and a gun, right? It's like, wait, 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 wait. I, I write this book. It's my intellectual property. I'm going to travel around and speak. I'm going to build a social media platform. And, and you're going to make how much money? And I'm going to make how much money? It didn't make any sense to me at all, right? And they wanted to take creative control of my project. They wanted to remove the edgier stuff. They wanted to take out the rants about the overemphasis on standardized test scores. And they said, this book is too personal. You wrote about walking through the canyons with your kids in this book. You wrote about your favorite Christmas carol in this book. That doesn't belong in a professional educational read. Where are the research studies? Where's the data behind all of this? Where's the footnoting and that was not the book I was looking to write this was my story my manifesto from a practicing classroom teacher to other teachers in the field about how I felt we needed to change education and then a practical roadmap for exactly how to do it so I told all the publishing companies exactly where to go I formed my own publishing company and I published teach like a pirate right from the kitchen table right off the uh, laptop at my kitchen table and in the process of learning how to do that and get my message to spread we learned a ton about publishing and now so with my wife Shelly what we do is we run a publishing company and we help other people people uh, spread their messages as well, like George Kuros and AJ Julian and John Spencer and Matt Miller, all these different people published with us. And so um, that's kind of the journey we're on now. That's all where it all, st that's where it all started from. And um, man, thanks so much for reading TLAP. 
well, you're welcome. So I, this is this is one I believe that's yours. Paul Solaris, Learn Like a Pirate. That was the that was the second book in the pirate series. I handpicked Paul. Yeah. Oh, I have, I have Matt's. Yep. Uh, yeah, shameless plug. I, Matt and Casey are interviewing me tomorrow for GT Tribe. Um, oh, nice. That's awesome. I have in here. Oh, I have, you know what? I loaned out, I just loaned out um, Launch. I loved Launch. Yep. Launch to me was that was the first one, like you said, and it really speaks to me, Dave, where you say, I don't want it full of data and the footnotes and all of that. Like, I don't, I don't, I know where to find that. I have my masters. I've done that. I want people who are in the classroom, not observing other people who are in the classroom. And I think that's why your your book speaks so much and so loudly um, to so many people. It's just it rings true to what we do every day. And that, that's one of the things that we work with authors. We work really hard with authors, and we tell them like, listen, like, we want practitioners. We want people who are out there doing this stuff, and we're we want the real stories from the trenches and what this looks like in a classroom with real kids, and, and you to put your voice into it, right? And so, like a lot of books today in education, we think you can just switch the names around on the bottom of the book, and it wouldn't matter because that author is not in that book. But if you think about our books, like the idea of switching the names on the bottom would just be ludicrous because yeah. we're in our books. And yeah. so we, that's one of the things that we really work with authors to do is to put themselves and their message uh, in, in their book. That's awesome. How many of your um, authors go on after they've published with you to stay in the classroom versus get their sort of the book deal and then they, like you guys must be busy all the time. Do you and Shelly have children? Can I ask that? Is that too personal? <laughs> It's not personal at all. We, I have two children. Oh, I have a tenth grade son and tenth grade son and an eighth grade daughter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So and five six or six six five. You said you're six five. I am. That's true. Yes. I'm, I'm, a, I'm like a circus freak. <laughs> um. So when <laughs> traveling and these other people, you have these books. And you're going around. Is it possible to have this sort of I want to say fame, like they become edu famous? And then still stay in the classroom and get that breadth of your message still out there. That must be challenging. Yeah, so we have a combination. So uh, many, many of our authors are still in the classroom and still doing this stuff. And they speak, many of them speak for us and they do workshops and things like that. Um, whenever they can get away, summers, weekends, things like that. You know, they, they, when they go to conferences, they speak there for us. Um, but then, then, then some have moved on. And so like right now, um, with the publishing company and with my speaking schedule, I'm out of the classroom at this point. So, but when I wrote Teach Like a Pirate, um, and for the period right after that, I was in the classroom trying to juggle both. Uh, but then the speaking schedule and all that just became too much. So I had to make a decision, tough decision. Um, to, if, I wanted, if I wanted to do justice to my message and spread it as wide as I wanted to spread it, I, I needed to, to go do my thing. Do you see yourself going back in? Uh, so I think it would be tough at this point because, um, well, I mean, the, the speaking schedule is crazy out for, you know, as long as you can see on the calendar. And the books, you know, where my passion lies right now is initially my passion so one of the things i like to do is like to follow my energy and so kind of like um derek sivers said said this where he said that you know when you're early on in your career getting started you do you say yes to everything and you do everything every opportunity that comes you say yes to it and then at some point it shifts where so many opportunities are coming your way that you can't do them all and you have to you have to somehow prioritize to make sure you do the the things that you really want to do and that's when you shift to becoming uh, and I won't use the cuss word but uh, uh, you you only do things that are an f yeah, yeah. <laughs> right and, and and so uh, I try to follow when I'm looking at things that I do I'm 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 looking for f yes and so the uh, teaching was that for me. I love teaching and everything about it and designing lessons and creating experiences for kids. That's where all my energy was. And then that energy got a little, you know, then I said, I'm going to write, I'm going to do this workshop. I'm going to travel and I'm going to do this workshop. And then it was in the book. And then now where my energy is, is really strong is in helping these other people, um, get their messages out into the world. I never I never wrote Teach Like a Pirate to be the end all be all of teaching. It's not like the, the teaching Bible or something. And I never saw it that way. Teach Like a Pirate was my story. And what I found to be effective and the message that I wanted to deliver, it's my manifesto. Right. But then 
it's not the whole story. So it, this, it's been a trying to find people that complement and add to the message. Like Paul with Learn Like a Pirate adds the student-led, centered side to teach like a pirate, right? And George adds the innovation side. And AJ and John are adding the design thinking and creativity side. And you know, and Don Wetrick with, with the uh, you know genius hour kind of. Uh, side of it and so all these people are adding and matt as that tech integration side so all these people that are part i'm trying to create this whole um message of which teach like a pirate is just one small part of it you guys you guys are the apostles <laughs> <laughs> you have matthew mark luke and john lined up um okay there you, so go. That's good. you talk about you following your energy you have a ton of energy and this comes from a woman who has a lot of energy as well like i can go people ask me all the time so how do you find the balance you can't obviously be on all the time and even reading your book I, I think the one thing that i found was wow this exhausts me to read i get how people now feel how are you on all the time so how would you suggest and i don't know if maybe i'm, I'm going to get to that because i'm only about a halfway through at this point how would you suggest people balance that because they can't be on all the time in that immersion and that that passion right. so how do you do it how do you make sure that you you have some downtime because you even talk there's one part one and that i love because so i i'm a competitive cheerleading coach and i considered giving it up in my new role because i just love it so much and i'm finding work-life balance really tough and that pulls me away because it's more work but then you you talk about here on page 53 you say don't fall into the trap of thinking time spent developing yourself as a well-rounded person above and beyond your role as an educator is wasted or something to feel guilty about and i think that's so important so how do you do that how do you find the balance so the the short answer is that we that's why we published the zen teacher <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so we have a book on mindfulness and balance as an educator actually but that's but I, i'm not trying to give you sales pitch the, the the truth of the matter is is that um not only does it create a more balanced and richer life but also like i said if, if you look at teach like a pirate there's not one single educational book that's referenced in teach like a pirate it's all outside of education drawn in right it's my background in marketing and entrepreneurship it's my background as a magician it's my background in rap it's my background in um you know the way a marketer creates buzz for a new product release i try to create buzz for lessons the way that um you know, my sense of staging and showmanship is influenced by my background in performance of magic and different things. So it's all outside drawn in. And so, and that's why I always think that Teach Like a Pirate is a way of looking at the world and always saying, how can I use that? Like what do other people use to engage? And how can I use that? What are kids into outside of school? And how can I use that? So whenever I see something that's, that's kind of drawing people in, like for instance, if anything that goes viral on the internet, I want to know why I want to why is that going viral and is there some way I can use that principle in my class and so um, that that's a big part of teach like a pirate is having that kind of worldview of always seeing things and, and every time I've got into something or honored my outside passions develop new passions it's always come back to help my teaching because it's given me that ammunition that 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 wider lens to be able to draw from to bring that back into like you know, those creative ideas back into teaching. So I think it's super important that we don't get so tunnel vision focused on education um, and, and we read wide and live wide because all those things are gonna come back and help us in the long run. Oh. Hey, so um, oh, I know. I'm, just looking at I'm gonna jump out. I was about to I'm tell gonna you. I'm gonna jump out. Yeah. You need to go. <laughs> yeah. Hey, thank you so much for inviting me in uh, tonight. And maybe when we get one of these another time set up for a Google Hangout, I can jump in and talk about some later parts in the book. But um, I'll leave you guys to continue the discussion. And uh, again, I'm honored that you guys are reading Teach Like a Pirate. So thanks so much. Thanks for your time, Dave. Yeah, you bet. Have a great chat. All right, so we're back. Hi, Susan. Hi, Jocelyn. Are you guys still there? Hi, uh, yes. Oh, excellent. I think Jocelyn's also, she's multi plotting right now too. So <laughs> Susan, have you, have you read TLAP before? Yes, I love it. I read it earlier this summer. Yeah. And I've told all my teachers about it and trying to get everybody to do it. And I'm hooked on the wearing the hats and the costume hook. So I need a gather oh, wow. supply right now. You've, um, you've jumped in. So I started a, a sort of virtual book club. Um, I, I threw it out on Twitter. Um, asking people, hey, who's in, in my, I, I teach, where are you from, Susan? I'm in McKinney, Texas. 
Okay, so we're in just north of Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Oh, so, how fun. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Oh, so sorry. I can turn my camera back on. I got a little intimidated with a day there. <laughs> I, um, I, I'm, a, I'm a coach. I'm, a, I'm basically a tech coach, as our toe says, how you guys would sort of label me, I, I guess. And I was in the classroom for four, 15 years, and now I have this role. I'm just starting it, and I'm taking a course about integrating uh, – technology into education into the classroom and into instruction and they wanted to do something in a classroom and I thought well I'm not in a classroom so maybe I could teach another way so I started a, I, I thought why don't I start a book club because I have a stack like this of books that I want to read for educational value and the next one on my list was TLA. Oh, okay. So I thought, okay well maybe I'll throw this out there so I threw it out to my district and um, it turned into this like sort of I think there were about 10 of us in the district and now there's about 40 of us in this book club from um, 10 of us are maybe a little less than that from Canada, like from our region. We have 10 different states represented. We have someone from Australia and someone from Northern Ireland. How fun. Um, so we have a Voxer group and essentially we, we sort of Vox around and um, we leave us, each other messages. We have a little Twitter handle that we sort of follow. We share things on a website and then and so if you can make it, you can make it. So this was my first attempt at having a Google Hangout. And most people said, it's not a great night. But I'm like, oh, well, Dave said he could make it and, and it's good for me. So I'm just going to try something. So... Anyway, that's what you're into right now. So we're actually, have, we've only read the first section. Of, well, some of us have already read the whole thing, but I, I'm sort of staying true so I don't get ahead of myself. Well, we've, done, we've done the actual pirate acronym. Okay. But um, I've seen Matt Miller had a, uh, a sketch note about the hooks, so I'm really excited to get yeah, into Yeah, I went, I jumped pretty much to the hooks. I jumped to what, what I could do in there, and I love it. So what should I anticipate then, or what should we? Because a lot of people are actually going to, watch this afterwards what would you suggest we uh we look for particularly you said the hats tell me about that uh one of them was just you know bring them in you know just to hook them in and i was i teach social studies and reading and so i've got a one of those tricorn hats for the american revolution we were teaching and i had that on i had a king hat so i'd wear a king hat and the other hat just to kind of explain the two sides that they were doing we're doing the civil war now and i've got a couple of hats i just like the the costume part. What grades? What yeah. grades? I'm in fifth grade right now. Okay. See, fifth grade is the perfect grade. Everyone I know who's really passionate <laughs> about education, like all the, like the, even the big book writers, like I'd say more than 50% of them are fifth grade teachers. There's something about 10 year olds. <laughs> well, they're fun and they get it and you can joke with them, but they're not too old. And I'd say just take the hooks and find one you really like and just use it. Yeah. Like I now, to launch my lessons and to just keep them involved. And then the kids like to wear the hats or, they like to be a part of it. I did a um, reader's theater with oh, them cool. too, with it. So I just, I like the hooks. I just got that. I just gravitated to that part. Just find a hook you like and just do it. That's what That's I like. Awesome. That's awesome. My district, my, one of my district coordinators wants to do the TLAP book as a book study for the district. So awesome. I think we're going to talk about that this summer too. Well, there you go. If you, if, you, uh, if you want some tips on how to do it more virtually, because our thing was you never have time in our day. We never right. make things with the kids are there, which is why I thought, okay, let's do it outside. That's why we went to Voxer. So it's sort of when you have your moment to leave a, a voice message or some people are doing images or whatnot, you have it there. We built a really simple Google site that oh. we went around. And yeah, it's, it's, it's worked pretty fluidly. Like every day there's something little there and it's conversations that you obviously wouldn't have. Like it's not often that I'm chatting with someone from Texas. Right. That's funny. And I've never done a Google hand, Hangout. I just saw your Twitter. I was like, oh, well, let me click on this. And all of a sudden, my camera popped on. And I go, wait a minute. Let me oh, it. Hang on. And that's Dave Burgess. Okay, hang on just a second. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, I'm glad you took that risk. That's part of sort of what he even talks about in here, right? Is that, okay, if you're, if, what, what does he say? He goes, if, if you haven't failed, you're not trying enough. So you're like, okay, I'm going to take this leap of faith. And here we go. All right, let me try it. See what happens. Oh, hello. How are you? <laughs> That's hilarious. That's hilarious. So then, then our first, in the first section that we just read last last week and a little bit this week, one, one of the things we're talking about, I don't know if you were here, um, if you've logged on at that point with Dave, I said um, in part one, he has his little acronym of the pirates. So we're discussing, just leaving little notes for each other about okay, which one is the hardest for us and which one comes most easily. And I've said, oh, here's my seven-year-old. Oh, hello. <laughs> Say hi. Hi. Okay, yes, very nice. Go ahead. Go back. Yeah, and there's Pikachu. Okay, thanks, honey. Oh, yeah. We we have that too. I've got a nine and an eleven year old. I mean, nine nine and thirteen. Goodness, Pokemon. <laughs> um. So anyway, we're talking about the the acronym, and 
I sort of said, okay, well, what, what one speaks to you and which one is the most difficult? And I, so this morning I left a message saying, I find that passion and, and energy are the two or enthusiasm rather are the two that I can really get into. But for me, the, the difficulty is immersion. It's that checking everything else at the door and being in the moment, that mindfulness of teaching. And yeah. I sort of made a joke that I'm like, well, today is Ash Wednesday. Maybe I should give up, you know, multitasking for Lent or something. <laughs> Not Catholic, but maybe I need to try it. Because I find with anything, it's especially being a tech coach, I'm constantly the barrage of emails and text messages and whatnot. And even right. the classroom, like all the paperwork I wanted to get through so I didn't have to take it home. Like the little one you just saw is my oldest of three. So life's really busy when I get home. So what about you? What If you think about that acronym, which one is most you and which one is your biggest challenge? Um, I think the energy right now. I think I'm doing better with the passion and the energy. I was, um, I've changed schools and I had a uh, new school for the last two years. That really re-energized where I was. But yeah, immersion can be a little challenging with all the distractions going on. But those moments that they actually do, it's so great and they get it. Yeah. I really love those moments. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Okay, well, I don't, Joss, are you there? Joss and sort of the I'm, other. Yep, I'm just, uh, because I'm running back and forth to various things in my apartment, I've got my camera off. <laughs> oh, do you have anything you want to add with Susan and I here? Otherwise, I'm gonna I'll start to wrap it up. I don't want to. I don't want to. I, uh, I have to do a little bit of reading catch up at this point. I I read. I'm gonna say half of the book, maybe three quarters, uh, two summers ago, I think. Right. So I've got to do some reviewing, refreshing, and and that sort of stuff because I've been where I've been spending a fair bit of time on the explore like a pirate. Yes. Uh, so I have to uh, I have to refresh my memory on Teach Like a Pirate before I can do a lot of contributing, but uh, looking forward to seeing where this takes us. Awesome. Susan, have you ever read Explore Like a Pirate or Learn Like a Pirate, any of those? No, those are on my next list. They're Great. on my stack to go next. Awesome. Okay, well, um, keep an eye. Our, um, we have a bit.ly, so a short URL at bit.ly forward slash virtual TBC for Teacher Book Club. So. Oh, okay. If you want to check there, when we end this book, we'll put our next one, and maybe it's one of them, and you're absolutely more than welcome to join us. We're sort of a rotating crew in that every book, we sort of, some members bow out for a book, and we get new ones, and that's sort of the plan for now. And okay. Manageable chunks, and if you can do it, you can, and if you can't, you know, things happen. Like today, we were supposed to have another couple of people, but people are sick and here in uh, the land of teaching. Right. And then there's random people on Twitter just clicking on you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm funny. You know, it was funny when no one came. Jocelyn was the one who said, put that out on Twitter. You never know who's going to show up. And so when you came, I'm like, I don't remember Susan. So I quickly went onto the iPad. And I'm like, oh, it's our new friend. Awesome. <laughs> we like new friends well, here. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Thanks for joining us. Okay. So for all those uh, who are going to go out and, and watch us in review, that's, uh, that's quite a treat for us um, to – to have the author here and to have a, a guest uh, arrival and then hopefully next time we can be a little bit bigger with our um thought this was fun it was kind of nice and intimate yeah it was, it was fun, fun. Okay. i'm gonna stop the broadcast if you girls want to stand for one second i just have a quick question for you but everyone else see you Thanks. next time all right